Welcome guys to day two of I am 33 days, I am more. Our reflection today is from Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, when Jesus says to Simon, and I tell you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Kind of a crazy statement, right? What does it mean? Uh, it's the theme for the day. I am more, you are more. You know, and it's the message that Jesus was del give, delivering and giving to Simon Peter. And he wants you to receive it today. So Chris in his book uh, actually kind of highlights something that I had never really thought about before, which is pretty neat. So this thing would have been when Jesus and the disciples were traveling from Galilee up to this town called Caesarea Philippi, Caesarea Philippi, Caesarea, I don't know, anyways, that town, right? And they were just outside of it, which has tons of rocks overlooking it. And there, the scene goes down. Jesus renamed Simon Kephas, or Peter, meaning rock. And he did it literally beside this massive rock. Almost like Jesus wanted to give a super obvious sign to help Peter remember who he was, especially in the times when he was going to doubt, when he was going to fail, when he was going to abandon him, uh, and to call him back to remembering who he was created to be. You know, maybe that was the moment that made all the difference for Peter. I don't know. Maybe. It's interesting to think about. You know, all we know is there's a difference between the outcome of Peter and Judas's story. It's been talked about quite a bit. Both in Jesus' time of need, they kind of turn their back on him. Right? Judas turns him over for the silver coins, right? and Peter denies him three, three times. But the difference between Peter, unlike Judas, he was not overwhelmed by shame. But in the end, ultimately, he was overwhelmed by God's mercy. He eventually repents, he seeks forgiveness, and he essentially recommits his life to follow Jesus and to lead his church, as Jesus always wanted him to. I think we can all relate to that, and we can forget sometimes who we are. I know I can become overwhelmed with my mistakes and my failures. Uh, we touched on that a little bit yesterday. And it's easy to kind of let our mistakes or failures or shortcomings become essentially the narrator of our lives. But we need to kind of think, you know, I'm going to present the idea today as our shortcomings are more as chapters and not as our whole story. I need to be reminded that I'm made for more. And you're made for more. And we're both made for a lot more than we think is possible, especially maybe in today's circumstances. Right? It's easy to live in these limiting beliefs. It reminds me of the story of uh, just last night. So it was the first day where it was 20 degrees here uh, in warm in Saskatchewan. And we're like, man, we got to get on the bike pass. We're going to carpe diem. We're going to seize the day. And we're going to try to teach Ezra how to finally ride his bike. Well, let's just say the hashtag should trend of pray for Ezri. Ezri, Ezri, Ezri. I don't even know my son's name. Ezra. Pray for Ezra. Let's just say it didn't go super great. As he fell 10, 15 times, all I could think about was saying to Ezra, you know, buddy, you're going to have to fall 100 times. Yeah, it doesn't sound like great motivation. I know. But I said, you know what the difference is? Eventually, you're going to fall 100 times, either today, tomorrow, or over like the next two years, or in the week, however you want to do it. But eventually, you're just going to finally get it. And Dad's going to let go, and you're going to cruise, and I'm going to have to chase you. I didn't want him to define himself as the boy who could ride a bike or the boy who fell down. I want him to know that he's a lot more than bailing on the grass or the boy who succumbed to fear after riding for three seconds and then freaked out and then flipping over his handlebars. He's fine, right? What did I want? I wanted my son to be known as the boy got up. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you're going. I don't know where he came from. I'm not sure what the Lord's up to in your life. But I do know he wants to say something to you. There's more to you. There's more coming. I want to wrap up today by asking you to reflect on the obstacles and those lies that have maybe defined and held you back. Become the narrators of your story. I want you to write them down. Pray through them. Scratch them off. Surrender them to the Lord. And then I want you to reflect on kind of the truth of what the Lord is naming you today. 
I want you to take time to flip the script, right? Say something like, you know what? I'm not weak. I'm strong. I'm not shy. I'm bold. What's the visible sign that the Lord has given you in your life as a reminder? What's your big rock? For me, I often think it's relationships. I can think of some of my favorite teachers and mentors, you know, Mr. Donovan, Mr. Barrett, former youth ministers, and kind of youth ministry leaders that mentored me, uh, Denise, Anita, Ryan, Marnie, Christian, Warren, Clay, Irwin, Shadow Dahlia, my close friends and family, right? They've been there for me to speak a word from God, to help me remember who I am, whose I am, and what I'm capable of, right? So maybe take some time, write them down. Circle them, don't scratch them out. Pray for them, thank them. Maybe tag them in this video. And remember that you are more. You are worthy and you are beautiful and you are strong and you are brave. And I can't wait to see what God's gonna do in your life. If you just give him the chance. I'll see you in prayer. God bless.